Hi everybody. I had my surgery on July the 17th. Um, I am still in recovery and I'm still learning my cans and can'ts. Um, when they tell you not to do any bending, twisting, stretching, anything else, don't do it. Trust me, you will pay dearly. So, with that, I will tell you, I have not had much nausea. I have not vomited, um, at least not these last two weeks. Um, I've only, I counted how many Percocets I had left. I've got 72. Because as soon as I stopped having a lot of pain, I went to OTC. Um, and I've been trying to take ibuprofen instead of pain medicine um, first. And the, uh, you heard the on cue uh, pump. Um, I found it to be an interesting device. It was used on me. I went home with it. And it works wonders. I don't know why it's not used for other surgeries. I mean, they may now be using it, but my last um, big abdominal surgery, um, I had a total proctocolectomy, and I didn't have one. Um, I came out with a PCA file. Um, and maybe that was just too big of a surgery, um, because that was a long recovery. Um, so that may be why. Um, but this thing is awesome. I kept mine because, you know, we don't hear, we don't see. We only get to see what they, what they post or what they put online or, or whatever. You get this wonderful, wonderful fanny pack on cue. And this is the, this is a big, well, not a big, just a big, Kind of, you know, lengthwise contraction. So, you get this, in, and I can't see what it was that was in was in this pump. But this is what the on cue pump, uh, this was full of whatever was, was in it. It was a big old ball. And... This is where they adjusted it. These two things. So these leads went down and went into my abdomen. And these were just like, you know, glued onto my glued on to me just to keep them from popping out and this is where it was delivered into my into my into my abdomen and either Thursday or Friday of that week Dr. Hughes told me to pull them out and I had no problems with pulling stuff out. My husband was a little bit unsure of me doing it, but I had no problem pulling anything out. So, when that little contraption came out, and the pain and everything was delivered out, and it finally all came out of my system, yeah, I felt some severe pain, um, and and that's when I started taking the uh, Percocets, and you know that that only lasted you know not very long, and then I went to ibuprofen, and um, the surgery itself um, lasted two hours. Got back to the room. And 
I asked for an ice pack. I kept an ice pack on my abdomen the whole time I was in the hospital. And I ate ice and drank water and just stayed completely hydrated and ran my IV fluids and the, um, they ran vancomycin on me, gave me my macrobid and, um, all my other medications and, uh, when I'm in the hospital, they don't give me my, uh, they give me Lovenox, not Xeralto. Because uh, Lovenox is, you take it, uh, you get a shot of it uh, once every 12 hours. And it's easier to, if you have to have surgery right away, you know, it can easily be taken care of. And so that's where that was. And... Yeah, it was a, it was a, the, it was a, it was a change of pace for me, because having Crohn's disease, being admitted into the hospital never has ever been, you know, a go in, get, have surgery, stay overnight, and go home. It's always been, you go in, you have surgery, you go through ER, and you're there for a week two weeks, three weeks, and then you go home. So, it was a nice, it was a nice change of pace for, for once for me. Um, as far as a pacer, um, it has a pocket that's filled with fluids, and uh, I, guess, I guess it can move around in there, um, because whenever I'm up and I bent over a few times, I feel it kind of moving a little bit. Um, I have an ostomy. I have an ileostomy, uh, which is your small bowel. And I don't have a large bowel or a rectum. I have what's called the Barbie butt. And um, so I have a lot of room in my abdomen. And um, where was I going with this? This happens every once in a while. Yeah. It's interesting and it can be embarrassing. I don't even know where I was going with this. Hmm. Okay, anyway. Anyway, it'll come by. <laughs> oh my. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have an ileostomy, and, um, that's been revised three times, um, but I, uh, I had asked to have the, uh, pacer placed in the same region, but just on the opposite side of my ostomy, Simply because, um, it is hard enough to find pants that, um, help, um, that help kind of discreetly hide, you know, the, the ostomy. I mean, over the years... I mean, I've had one since 11, but, you know, some, some of the way these designers are making clothes and how they're coming into fashion and leaving and, you know, one thing that doesn't, it just has stayed around all these years is high-waisted pants. So, even, even, even some of these low-waisted pants for me, because I'm vertically challenged, you know, um, end up being, you know, normal for me, but it's, it's, you don't want to get your pants to where you're hitting the middle of your bag, because when you get air, the air leaves the bottom of the bag, goes up to the top, and then you're left with this, and you're not even paying attention, because you're just used to wearing it, and 
then you feel, and I'm constantly feeling, constantly, because I'm constantly aware of what this thing's doing, and then you feel this, this big old bubble on top, and that's embarrassing, because you know if you feel it, then people, then other people can see it, so, yeah, I wanted it the same height, and same, same regional area on the other side so that I can make sure that all my clothes, all my pants and stuff would would cover it. So he did a pretty good job and um, he wasn't sure if he could or not but I, I don't think he realized how, how short I am through here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean that's just, even when I had my ileostomy first done, I mean you know, I went in and we discussed where it was going to go and had a little shot of dye stuck in my side. And um, a second time um, was an emergency. And he come in and looked at me. He said, we're going in for surgery where you want it. He marked it. And then the third time my surgeon came in and that was an emergency too. And he just did it. I didn't even. They kept me under for a week. Because I had pneumonia. And I wasn't. I couldn't be a candidate for surgery at the time. And they kept me under with a feeding tube. Oh no. It's not a feeding tube. It was a suction. Because I, cause I always had a bowel obstruction. I was suctioning everything on my stomach. And gave me a NG tube to do that. And. I am a fighter, and I don't like things stuck down my nose, and I will pull it out. And I had done that, and when I didn't want a catheter, I pulled it out. So, yeah, they learned their lesson with me. I have to be medically induced. Yeah, they had some fun with me. So... Still just learning um, my boundaries, um, what I can and can't do, and how much of it I can do, and how much I'm going to have to leave, lay on to my husband and leave him with it. And I hate that because he works a hard job. I mean, he works 12 hours a day, four days a week, and, well, 10 to 12 hours a day. Depends. Hey. You know, factory jobs are hard, and especially here in Kentucky. I mean, we our weather is crazy, and it's hot, and it's humid, and hell, I worked in a nursing home, and it was hot and humid, and then you got little old people who are freezing to death when it's like 100 degrees outside, and they've got their heat on. And so my poor husband, he's just killing himself. They asked to come home and help me. But that's what being married and loving somebody else is all about, I guess. So. And I haven't paid too much attention to my crumbs lately. I've had all my side effects, but I've been worried too much about this daggone surgery. Last night it was joints and pain was radiating into my muscles, couldn't sleep. Headache, nausea. I was nauseated last night. But anyway, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update. Um, probably be a couple more weeks for the next one. Um, I go back to the doctor this month. Um, it's got to be in the next couple of weeks. I got to call and find out. I think they're supposed to be calling me. I remember, I remember making the appointment. I don't remember what day. I know that I asked them to remind me because I remember calling and setting it up. But I don't remember what it was. But I know I was. I was 
out in La La Land somewhere. It's like I, my daughter was here with my grandbaby, and I remember bits and pieces of it. Yeah. So. But you guys have a great day, and may God be with you. And if you have any questions, hit me up.